Super. Right. So, yeah, we're here today to talk about abundance blocks and the growth mindset, because creating abundance is really all about this um, being open to growth. And many of us are actually unconsciously blocking our growth and abundance because we have these blocks to it and they manifest in many ways. We pick them up very early in life. We pick them up from friends, from family, uh, from peers. And also when we've been through difficult circumstances, there's something difficult has happened in our life. We develop a set of emotional and mental responses that happen so quick from our subconscious mind. We're not even aware of them. And then the next time we face some kind of emotion or struggle or upheaval, our subconscious mind goes, oh, I've had trauma before. I know what to do. I'll do this. But it might be totally inappropriate for what we're trying to achieve. So we're here to talk about those blocks, really, how to identify them and how to overcome them faster. And next week is all going to be it's going to be all about overcoming those blocks. That's what it's all about. So abundance blocks or so-called manifesting blocks are really these roadblocks that prevent you from making a success of the law of attraction and manifestation. And as long as you don't identify and approach those blocks for abundance, you'll only have very moderate success in manifesting what you want. You'll have a bit of success and then that's some. You'll get some and you think, oh, great, everything's changing. And then it, and then it won't. But don't worry, because this is what this seminar and next week is all about. So what exactly are abundance blocks? So they manifest in, in many, many ways. So um, they're really the base upon which we manifest. So if you imagine manifestation process is like building a house, you first need a solid base. So to build your manifestation, you need to look at what rocky ground you're trying to build your life on. What limiting bliss, all right, <laughs> what limiting beliefs, um, what behaviors, what emotions, what things are you holding on to that you've learned from your parents, from peers, from past life experiences that are instantly responding to things when they come up now before your conscious mind, they actually trip in before your conscious mind even gets a chance. So the most common blocks to abundance are your mindset, really, how you look at life. Do you expect Things to go well. Are you in a con are you a permanent optimist who goes, yeah, it's all going to work out. It'll be fine. Or are you a pessimist that's going, oh, it'll never happen to me. Uh, nothing ever good happens to me. It's all doom and gloom. If I go for a job, I just won't get it. Because if you're of a pessimistic mindset, that is not a growth mindset. We may have all these limiting beliefs. I can't achieve success because. I'm too fat. Well, you know, I'm the living embodiment, but that isn't true. I'm carrying loads of weight at the moment. It doesn't make any difference to my bank balance. So, you know, I'm not pretty enough. I haven't got the degree. Um, people like me don't earn money. People who earn money are greedy. Um, you know, it, it's not very, you know, you're sort of grubby if you've got money. We can have a lot of limiting beliefs that we picked up from other people. Again, our self-image actually can trip us up about who do we think we are on an internal level and an external level. Uh, we can have poor emotional habits that show up. So someone says something we don't like, we may not like taking no, we may not like taking rejection, and it just crushes us rather than us thinking actually the no was probably more about them than it was about me. Uh, we can have poor habits. We may stay up too late, get up too late, eat unhealthily, um, not discipline ourselves in self-care, um, which can knock on then into our body and our health, how we look at our body, how we treat our health. There can be blocks in our environment. So and this isn't just having a cluttered home. We're going to get into these a little bit more in depth. I like having a cluttered and tidy home. It can also be on the energetic level as well and the spiritual level and our relationships. Of course, who we surround ourselves with and how supportive they are makes a tremendous difference to how we can manifest. So we're going to cover them a little bit in, go through them quite quickly, and then we're going to look at what we're talking about next week. Um, and then I'm going to ask you, you know, if you've got any questions or things that you want to ask, do ask them. That you know, this don't hold back thinking, oh, I can't ask them because I feel a fool, or you know, nobody else is asking questions or whatever. If you have questions, do ask them because if you're not manifesting 
the wealth, abundance and freedom that you want. There's something inside of you or in your environment and of the various sort of nested energy ecologies that we live in will we'll be, you know, we're all, we're all born to do something great. If we're not doing it, then something's gone amiss, basically. And it doesn't mean great as in we're all meant to be political world leaders, but we're all meant to be fulfilling our soul's purpose. And if we're not doing that, then we're letting life drag us down and all those lessons that we're designed to grow through, but we've not yet grown through them. So mindset is one of the big things we're going to be looking at next week. And that's going to be, we're going to be looking at various things about that. Do you believe you can achieve success? Because that's one of the things that many people struggle with. When it comes really, really, if we're brutally honest, really deep down, we will write affirmations on post-it notes. And I used to do this and stick them all around the house saying, I am rich, I am wealthy, I am successful. And then I was homeless at the same time. So my objective reality was completely different than the reality I was looking at. So with all the will in the world, you know, my conscious mind was going, I'm wealthy, I'm successful. And my subconscious mind was going, yeah, right. Look at it, look at your life, really. You know, you're not, are you? So without that belief, um, and there's ways of getting around that with how we talk to our subconscious mind. Gratitude is part of it, but it's also actually about for many people, achieving abundance is about break, just embracing the joy of life, not focusing on external goals. It's not focusing on the, yes, we need to focus on the income that we want to generate. Of course, we for our primary concern, actually, to attract abundance is how happy am I? Actually, at the end of the day, how happy am I? And if you're not happy, you won't attract abundance. It's It really is that simple. We can make it as convoluted and complicated as we want but if we're not happy we won't attract abundance it doesn't mean we've got to be happy happy all the time because life isn't like that but we need to know we can navigate it so the growth mindset is all about being aware that you can having that belief um, that you can do these things it's about knowing that you can so i've just dropped off my, one of my windows it's about knowing that you can um achieve um, that you have, you can actually change, that you have control and that you can develop. And that is the key to your success, to recognize that your mindset can change, your habits can change, your self-image can change, that you have absolute control over them and you can develop and you can shift your beliefs at any time you like, because we have this concept that beliefs are fact. So let's say, Sue was here this morning. Let's say Sue has a fear of flying. So she never gets on a plane. So Sue will have a fear of flying. She never gets on a plane because flying is dangerous. So she never gets on a plane. So she creates that reality that flying is dangerous. But let's say Angela has no fear of flying. She just gets on a plane and jets around the world. So her reality is that flying is safe. She can travel. Sue's reality is that flying is unsafe, so she never goes anywhere, and that is her reality. So our beliefs, we look at them as objective facts, some kind of objective truth that's out there, but it's actually not. It's, it's entirely of our own making. What we believe is possible will become possible. If we don't believe it's possible, it won't become possible. So this is so. This is what next week is all about. It's about looking at your beliefs. It's about realizing that you can change things, that you have the capacity to change it and the steps that you need to take to change that inner response, to change that belief, to trick your subconscious mind into starting to have new reactions to new stimulus and allowing those things to come in. So mindset is the, is the big thing. And of course, within that is all our limiting beliefs, isn't it? Why we can't do something. Why we will never, oh, turn your phone off. Why we will never be able to achieve all the things that we want to achieve why it's not possible for us. And this is because of our subconscious mind tries to keep us safe at all times. So its primary objective, our subconscious mind, is to keep us away from vipers, bears, wolves, falling off cliffs, being clubbed to death by the enemy. You know, basically that's what the kind of thing it's looking out for all the time. So it's looking, it is wired to look for danger and threats in everything. And that stays with us in modern life. So you might say, oh, I'm going to invest in a coach. 
But actually, by exchanging that money, there's an element of risk. I might lose my house. I might not be able to pay back. So the subconscious mind tripped in and goes, oh, I'm going to be homeless. I'm going to be eaten by bears. Therefore, I won't invest in coaching. That's it. Job done. I'm not going to do it because it's too risky. So we have to look at our subconscious mind and go, thank you very much for the little nudge. You know, but this is, this is not in that game. This is a different thing because that's where this fear block comes up. That's where this pit in our stomach comes up. This energy comes up when we think about parting with money, for instance, when we're not yet convinced of the value that we're going to get back. And this is why this is why as a coach, obviously, it's my job to convince people of the value of working with me. that actually you're going to get a return on your investment, which is why we use case study testimonials, all those kind of things to show people everybody feels that fear. It's perfectly natural. Everybody feels fear at doing anything new for the first time. and We can never be guaranteed of the results. And because to train for success, in essence, you have to train like an athlete. If I was going to do diving as an Olympic sport, I have to go on a little diving board and I have to work my way up. I don't suddenly go to the top, look over the edge and go, no, it's not for me. Going to give up not going to do that or a diver doesn't think well i've mastered that dive and then get there go no i can't do the next one that's as far as i'm going to go i'll just compete at that level and because they're not going to get the success they were looking for so you constantly have to push through fear boundaries and it doesn't matter how successful you get you're always going to face fear boundaries they're just going to be at the next level whether it's spending 700 on a coaching program or 5,000 or 50,000, or a friend of mine has just spent 250,000 for a year's coaching. It doesn't matter what level you're at, the fear block is exactly the same. But from knowing that personally, knowing that making those little steps, consistent steps that push you through that fear, that make you challenge those limiting beliefs, those little daily habits, over time there's this incremental change which means rather than making no changes and staying there or in fact going down you gradually start to make this successful leaps and it doesn't just leap up you'll go up plateau down a bit up a bit you know it's like one of those zigzaggy graphs but generally you go from there to there and it's about keeping that faith and you need that growth mindset to accept challenge to accept fear to look at your own beliefs on your own behaviours and think to myself, how have I created this reality? How have I contributed to where I am now? Because it didn't happen by accident. It happened by me making decisions based upon fear or upon scarcity. It happened by me making decisions where I didn't want to rock the boat or I didn't want to offend anybody else or I had poor boundaries and I agreed to things that I didn't really want to agree to, but I felt I ought to or I should, all those things, those decisions that we make often in avoidance, because we often make decisions to avoid something we perceive as negative, rather than actually to achieve something positive. Those all compound over the years, and we can end up in a life then that's very narrow, very scarce, really doesn't give, a, give us what we want, because there's, there's those decisions that we kind of make unconsciously in an avoidance, and then come back to bite us. This is why mindset is so important. And this is why it's so important to teach it from children to a young age to have their boundaries so they know their worth, so they know what they do and don't want to do. So they don't they don't reach sort of middle age. But then she's shaking them by the shoulders going, do you know what? You really need to get on with stuff because you're about to mess it all up if you don't take action now. So uh, the problem is, our beliefs is that become so embedded in our subconscious mind, they stay there. And then not much will change in our life. So we have to take consistent action to overcome them. And again, our beliefs can be tied up, like I said, in our self-image. We can, in our physical appearance, you know, I'm not good looking enough. I'm not young enough. I'm too fat. I'm too this. I'm not that. I can't possibly go out in public and talk about what I want to do looking like this. But also our perceived possibilities. I don't have the skills, I don't have the experience, I don't have the degree, no one's going to listen to me. All those things, that limiting belief and that self-image, you know, it is a question of going out there, being bold and being proud and going, I don't care what you think about me, this is what I came to do. But that is a 
that is a hard won battle. And I know that from personal experience. But the times I've been incredibly confident, the times I've had the stuffing knocked right out of me through making poor decisions. And the other thing that I want to talk about is this is this is something that slightly bugs me with all the spiritual stuff that we're going to get out that's out there at the moment is stuff to do with emotions. And it's stuff to do with alignment that we hear. If it feels good, it's in alignment. And if it doesn't feel good, it's not in alignment. But there is no growth without friction. We can't grow if we don't push ourselves through challenges and challenge those beliefs. And that friction is uncomfortable and often does not feel good. So we need to look at our emotions slightly differently. It, there's a lot of... Our emotions are true, but they can be misleading. And it doesn't do to just follow your emotions at the expense of engaging your critical and cognitive processes, thinking about them. Why do I feel the way I do? Where has that come from? Why has this upset me so much? Or So common emo emotions that can block your abundance are things like fear. I don't want to do that because it's making me fear. Um, envy of other people's success, guilt over stuff you feel you've done wrong in the past, sadness, I've missed the boat, it's too late, all those kind of things block abundance. So, you know, I would go with the more um, cognitive behavioral therapy point of view, having been a previous worked in psychology, that we have to look at our emotions, but not necessarily just follow them blindly because that can just end up, if we follow our emotions and go, that feels bad, I'm not gonna do it. Then we end up standing exactly where we are because we don't wanna move through those challenges. And then what, what does that lead us? Just staying where we are. It keeps us in the misery and the scarcity and the sense of unfulfillment that we've got already. We just get more of the same. And in fact, if you follow that route, eventually your life will actually get smaller and smaller and smaller. So we need to go through those challenges and we need to go through those changes to grow as human beings. So I want you to think for a minute about, because I'm gonna put you on the spot at the end, what is your biggest challenge? What is your biggest fear thing at the moment around creating success? And I'm going to get you to put it in the chat box. I'm gonna have a little talk about it in a, in a minute. So, you know, think about your habits as well. You know, the law of attraction and manifesting is not magic. It's not woo, it's not, Ooh, we know I'm going to write something and I'm going to magically with load of fairy dust and tinkly bells, it's going to manifest. Manifest is about taking inspired action towards your goal. You want to be a quantum physicist? You want to travel into outer space? You're not going to do that sitting in an armchair after you have to go and study physics and train to be an astronaut. That is the aligned action. It's so whatever you want, if you feel you've got a skills gap or a confidence gap or a boundary gap or you know, your goal, your goal may be weight loss. Well, you're not going to do it if you carry on with the eating habits. So there's inspired action is to hire a dietitian and a fitness instructor. And you will manifest the weight loss. It is not, none of this is rocket science, but bad habits often keep us from taking that step because habits become so ingrained, they become part of our limiting beliefs, they become part of our identity, that it is friction to change those habits. And we find it uncomfortable. Therefore, if we follow our emotions of, oh, this is uncomfortable, we stay exactly where we are again. You know, so the, they're perpetual self-fulfilling cycles. So body and health, I've talked about how we look after ourselves. And the other part, of course, is the environment. Now, for those of you who don't know me very well, who may be new to the group, one of the other programs that I run is the Abundance Energy Academy. And that is all about working with not just your home on a physical sense with the chaos and the clutter and you know the color and all those kind of things it's also about the energetic properties and this is true of everything what is in your environment and how strongly does it affect your emotional and mental world so we talk about environment you know as in our physical environment but there's also who is in your life do they support you do they impinge on your time? Are you surrounded by negative people that try to control you? Do you engage in looking at magazines full of horror stories and personal interests that are actually trauma? Do you spend hours scrolling through social media, looking at things and just wasting time? Do, you know, 
is your environment cluttered? Is it, you know, do you hate your home? Are you in a neighborhood that's just, you know, doesn't support your growth? All these things have, again, have a massive impact on your success. And it doesn't mean you can't work through them and it doesn't mean you can't change them. But you have got to take that inspired action and you have got to know that it's a stepped process and it's not going to be overnight. Manifesting isn't overnight. It's never overnight. Every overnight success has taken 15 years, as I say. And it doesn't mean manifesting is going to take that long, but you have to accept that you can change your vibe and your thoughts in an instant. But the universe might take a little bit of time to get some of those things to you that you actually want. And within that environment, like I said, there are people. Now, our relationships are a massive factor in our ability to manifest. So because they have a considerable influence on our inner being, our personal development. So there are relationships that we choose for ourselves, such as romantic relationships, friendships, for example, and to some extent, our colleagues at work, for instance, because we choose our jobs. Other relationships we can't consciously choose, so parents, siblings, things like that. But no matter what kind of relationship it is, we have control over whether we want to accept change or give up a relationship. Do we want to limit contact with people? We have absolute control over that. Now, a lot of people will say, oh, I, you know, I can't cut them out of my life because of so-and-so. Now, that makes out that there isn't a choice. There is always a choice. It just might not be an easy one. But if we want things to be easy all the time, then we're not, again, we're not working through those challenges of up-leveling. So this is what next week is all about. It's all about looking at living in alignment. Are we being ultimately true to ourselves? Are we being happy? And looking at your mindset, your limiting beliefs that you hold, it's all about looking at your subconscious mind, where those limiting beliefs are held, where, you know, that can be blocking your success. And then it's all about sort of um, raising your vibe, as we say, your frequency. So getting out of this dead funk that you're in where you can't achieve anything and getting your vibe in a better place where you start to expect great things, where you start to be wanting to move forward and knowing that good things are going to come your way and how to stay like that. Because, um, you know, unless we're in that place, we're not going to keep attracting things. We're going to, we need to be higher vibe, basically. If you're, if you're in this low, like I said, negative space, that's nothing's ever going to work. And it doesn't mean we have to stay consistently high vibe 100% of the time and be like some overexcited, crazy person you know, everybody's vibe is unique to them. You know, I'm quite, I'm quite sort of, um, I'm quite sort of laid back. I can be a bit slow sometimes. You know, being high vibe for me doesn't mean being in a high frenetic state. It just means that my vibe has to be positive, not the same as anybody else's. But for me, I have to be living in alignment. So it's knowing what that feels like for you, and that will come through your habits and your beliefs that we're going to be working on in the other days. So, for instance, you know. It's very hard to stay high vibe if you're going to bed too late, getting up too early and drinking four bottles of wine in the evening. You know, you're not going to be very high vibe the next day. And those habits are going to, you know, prevent you from being successful. So with that in mind, um, who wants to share? Who wants to be share and be brave? Because there's only a few of us here. Who wants to share and be brave about what is your biggest block to abundance? right now what's the one thing you want to achieve and why don't you think you have already achieved it what's held you back you can unmute yourself if you want to to answer this question or you can type it in the chat box it's entirely up to you now it could be money could be better relationships could be you know you start a new business and you not get enough clients um it could be just fear of stepping out and doing something different. Have a think about it for a minute and see what is your, what's the biggest thing you want? I say to achieve by the end of the year, gives you more scope. <laughs> uh, hi, Faith, uh, Nyla here. Hello. Hi. 
uh, well, um, uh, first of all, thanks a lot for all this, uh, all this, uh, you know, wonderful things that you have been sharing with us. Uh, my blog has been uh, the fear of uh, trying new things or st stepping out of my safety zone. Uh, I come from Pakistan, so we have a family network here and uh, women are supposed to be more home oriented, although I'm a career person and I have a career, but even then I uh, take that as a, you know, uh, with a pinch of thing that, okay, family has to come first. So there are many things I, I'm afraid of stepping out of the safe zone let's do, uh, that I've developed over the years. So much of work, so much of house, so much of me, and that's it. So I am afraid of losing the balance if I step out of my safety zone. Yeah, I mean, there are... I'm an artist, yeah. Yeah, so there are, obviously, there are cultural differences. There are, you yeah. know, in, in other cultures, there are very strict guidelines within which women must live their lives. And there are, in certain countries, very real and potentially dangerous repercussions from stepping out of those, of that parameter. So... You know, some women are incredibly brave and do things that threaten those social contracts. They become political activists or whatever. But for some women, you know, then they're not there yet. Absolutely. Couldn't, you know, I, I don't know. I've never had the I don't live in a country like that. So it's very difficult to say actually how brave I would be in certain circumstances. If I'm brutally honest, sometimes I'm incredibly brave, sometimes not. And I think that's particularly when we have children. You know, there's that, there's that, I have to be here to protect the family. There's that, there's that instinct, isn't there? Motherhood in many respects. Um, so how supportive are your family? I mean, you don't, you're not going to have to wait for their support or wait for their permission. But if you said, is it your family that you worry that are going to look at you in a way that is disapproving? Is it family or peers? Well, um, I suppose, uh, I think, at this stage i'm 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 uh, uh, 55 now at this stage i don't really think they're going to be not supportive it's just my me myself who's holding me back perhaps uh, i have started venturing out a little bit i was a plein air artist and i stopped painting too much because time was uh, you know uh, my parents were also, also here my father passed away a couple of years back so we have to look after our elders also here um so i started painting about a year back about six months back stepping out of the zone and my immediate family was just fine they were okay with it they were happy with it my husband on the other hand felt a little ignored and but then that's the way men are <laughs> so, but the only thing is, <laughs> the only thing is that I, uh, it's, uh, I think it's perhaps it's inside me that I don't uh, feel yeah. that uh, if I uh, lose a balance, I, I'm happy where I am right now, vis-a-vis -vis my family, vis-a-vis -vis my career, vis-a-vis -vis my, uh, you know, how I'm venturing out into my yeah. painting again. Uh, I'm, I'm, an, I'm at a stable stage, but it's not all that I think I can achieve or I have the um, uh, uh, potential to do it. Uh, I just feel I'm holding myself back. So I think, I think it would be, look at what you would perceive would be the negative consequences of achieving what you want. Uh -huh. Because we often focus on the negative consequences of not achieving what we want. But uh -huh. we often have a lot of negative consequences to achieving what we want. So yeah. you're worried yeah. about losing the balance. So what would that what would that negative consequences of losing the balance look like to you? What are your beliefs um, about I'll lose balance and this will happen? What are those beliefs that you're holding? Uh, I haven't really, really thought about that too much, but I suppose just because I like um, uh, at heart, I'm a home person. So is it you feel that you're not going to be spending so much time at home, for instance? I like having my family around. Um, I really, I haven't really thought about it too much. It's, it's, it's that I may lose what I have right now. I may lose what is good right now. Yeah. For pursuit of something else that I feel may be good for me. So the, so something the, like that. <laughs> yeah. So the fear is that if you pursue your goals, you're somehow going to lose your family, because but yet, but yet they have expressed support. So can you see the yeah, conflict yeah. in that in that situation? So you've got two conflicting beliefs that you are holding there. One is, uh -huh. Uh -huh. I, so so it would be worth digging back to see what supports those those beliefs. So, you know, there may be cultural beliefs that when women do this, historically in Pakistan, they get ostracized. Yeah. 
Now, but uh -huh. is that still the case today? Because I don't live there, so I don't know. But I no, know no. there are. I know uh, there are. It, I know there are. You know, it's not the same uh, as Western. Uh, it's 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 different. It's different according to the social status you belong to. We yeah. have a you know whole range. So I'm not in that status that I would be ostracized. No. No, okay, um, so it's okay. not that bad. It's not that bad. Um, it's just that you know, um, having achieved after so many years a certain balance where the family is also happy and I'm also happy. Uh, I don't want to upset the balance. That's about it. Yeah. Um, so what? So what do you? Th so it's about digging into that. What do you th feel that pursuing art? How well, exactly is it going to upset the balance? Is. Yeah. So is it because you're not going to have so much time with your family? Yes, it's yes, exactly. Issue. If I yes, yeah. if I won't have time, then obviously they will not be looking uh, for time with me. They will obviously start to, um, uh, you know, find find time to do other things. I'm just just taking <laughs> one eggs out of the other basket. I yeah, think it's, and, it's but, something and it, like it's that. also it's also if you've got to, you know I, I don't know whether you've got you know how many like children you may still have at home and things like that. So there is a there is a it's kind of like conflicting with the what we call the empty nest syndrome as well isn't it that, that, uh -huh, that stage uh -huh. where people could be leaving but you've got to find other interests but really it's like how much time do you spend doing it and if you looked at your organize your diary for instance so that you said right I'm going to spend so much time doing my art then you know I'm going to have so many hours a day doing art but I'm, I'm going to make a conscious effort to spend so much time with my family doing things where I'm focused or I'm present with them really how much would it impact your family if you did it in that way um i'm i'm really not sure i don't uh, as i said you just said what's holding me back i think it's me myself who's holding myself yeah. back <laughs> <laughs> yeah it is there's, there's this fear yeah. of the li life as i know it is going to change yes yes and yes. i don't know what it's going to change into yes therefore yes. i'm afraid of it <laughs> oh. So I think you have to get uh, you have to get okay with being okay not knowing. You have to get I suppose okay so. with, yeah, I you suppose. have to get okay with saying uh, uh, yeah. Whatever yeah, it I turns so. into, I'm okay uh, with it. Yeah, yeah. I think I suppose that's what I need to tell myself. Yeah. Yeah. But okay, they're, not, thanks. So, they're not suddenly going to abandon you, are they? They're going to be proud of you. No, no. <laughs> yeah. I think so, so, so look at all the positive things. You know, imagine if you had an yeah. art exhibition, all your family turned up to support you. How great would that be? Yeah. You know, so well, look, it happened. I, I had an exhibition about last yes. month and everybody was very happy and it, yeah. you know, it turned so, out great. Yeah, so folks, so the or, or the the evidence, actually, your, your subconscious mind is holding on to beliefs, but the actual evidence in your life is contrary. So start to yeah. focus on the evidence that is contrary to that belief. Okay, okay, yeah. I'll work on that. Okay, you know, look for the, when they go, I'm yeah. really proud of you, mum, I really yeah. support you. When they say yeah. things like that, look uh, at that make a note of it in your diary write it down uh, and, and start uh -huh. to show your subconscious mind there is evidence oh, well, to the contrary of well that. Uh, uh, here at in the east we don't really say it out like so much you have yeah. to gather out from the evidence uh, my yeah. daughter would be a little bit envious because you know she wants to uh, pursue a career herself yeah. so uh, i just feel she feels mom's uh, putting too much effort in her own thing not mine <laughs> but anyway that's uh, <laughs> Yes, well, yeah, well, we're all human yeah. beings, so we will need we're our own things. Beings, okay. yeah. Thank you so much, Faith. Thank you okay, so much. No problem. I'm, I'm just, are, you, are you joining uh, us for the last? Are you joining yes, us? For I am. I am. Yes, yeah, I am. Yes. Yeah, I am. Okay. So we'll see I'll you next there. week. Okay. See you. See okay. you. I'm, I'm right here. I'm just going to mute my uh, okay. mic now. I can do it as well. Give right. someone else a chance. <laughs> okay. Right, Sue. Um, no, sorry. Yes, Sue. Wasting too much time writing a course. I know I waste too much time. I've been writing a course since November, but putting but keep putting it off. Right. OK. Um, is this course something you're going to be launching online? Um, you're holding back. Is it is it a fear of being visible? Is it fear of telling people what you're actually going to be offering? Hi, I'm all hot and sweaty from delivering leaflets. Um, <laughs> <laughs> sitting in my car now. Um, so I put it out there that it was going to start on the 4th of January for it's a three week course. Um, so I put it out there and nobody bought it. So I stopped writing it. Right. Um, so and then I started again. And then in, in my head, I'm thinking, well, if it's not there for people to buy, no, nobody's going to buy it, are they? So I'm, no. I'm, I'm with that mindset. So I need to get it finished. So I've written two weeks of it now. Um, so. Um, but I think it's because, yeah, it's visibility 
and people thinking it's rubbish. <laughs> <I think. laughs> no, I, I don't jest because we've all had that one. <laughs> yeah, I, I honestly, I mean, I listen back and I think, well, I'm not sure it's good enough, but then for the people that I'm aiming it at, it should be. I don't, it's really difficult, isn't it? But yes, I think that's where my fear is. Yeah, I mean, I think we all we all have that fear and it, it you know, there's that deep belief, isn't it, that what I do, people aren't going to want. It's not going to be of a high enough standard. I'm not as professional as everybody else. It's not as yep. glossy. It's not as this. It's not yep. as that. But you have to, I would really concentrate on niching down on who you are delivering it to, what is the problem you are solving, and what is the result that they can expect at the end. That will help you keep focused on why why you're doing it. So focus on the value that you're going to give them. Now, what, which which I have, which I, I I'm, I'm I have I, um, I've done a lot of work on on that, but because I I know who it is specifically, hmm. I'm I that's what worries me that they're going to think it's not good enough. So what is there a particular aspect of it that you think is not good enough? Is it the content? Is it? Yeah, I think it's. I think it's more the content. So I listen back. It's all on audios every day. There's a different thing every day, um, and it's the audios. Um, and I don't know whether I'm explaining it enough. If I'm putting enough into it, um, well, so what, yeah. I, what's the price point as well? Uh, one hundred and ninety nine pounds for three weeks. Yeah. Ooh. Um. You see, there's a there's a belief there, isn't there, underneath all that about your value? Yeah. <laughs> Let's get down to the nitty gritty of it. <laughs> <laughs> because £199 is a very low price point. So, and I can okay. guarantee, without even looking at your course content, that it is worth more than £199. Okay. <laughs> guarantee you, because we all do this. We all do it. I can guarantee that it's worth. You are probably over delivering <laughs> for that price point. And that £199 energetically, it says to people, well, you might like this. It might help you. Perhaps I'll throw in something free with it as well to make it more attractive. Um, it, 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 people buy from people who are confident because you want to know that, that person has got your back. The person who's got to help you it's got to be someone that no matter what you comes at you go it's okay we can deal with this there's a problem but we'll find a solution so within that framework of this is my value this is what i'm charging this is what i perceive i'm i can solve your problem with why there's a deep hidden belief here about your value as a human being which probably comes from your in, your early childhood and may even relate to your relationship with your mother or your father. How was your relationship with your parents? It was okay, but I'm one of four. So um, I've always been the one that's gone out and done my own thing sort of from, from so, an early age. So were you the older, middle or younger? Uh, second, second, second of four. So, yeah, so you fell into that trap, didn't you? The oldest one's the firstborn. Joy! Yeah. Along comes the yeah. second one that's, oh, God, added to the burden. And then, <laughs> and you're not that, but, yeah. and, oh, the little baby ones, you know, so you get you get kind of, yeah. you're in this no man's land, aren't you, where you kind of get don't get the attention, you don't get the support. You know, the older ones probably, you know, you go and show your parents what you've done, and it's like, look what I've done. Oh, yeah, that's lovely, but the older one needs something and the younger one needs attention. Yeah. And there's that, there's that yeah. deep childhood thing of, nobody really wants what i offer nobody really wants yes, yes. me here yeah so that you're stuck so that's really deeply ingrained and to be honest with you you know because i'm a bit weird so i can see auras and chakras it's it's in, it's it's radiating in your aura this insecurity of i'm not good enough and when you do your marketing that will trip you up if you don't address it because you'll be coming okay. your marketing with timidity that you will approach and I do. yeah yeah it'll it'll reek of oh please buy it you know i i think i can help yeah. you 
you know, and you, you know, you have to actually go out there, be a bit bold and brassy and Beyonce, if I'm brutally honest, you know, we, and it, <laughs> we have to do it to, to A, inspire confidence in people, but also it raises our vibe and it raises our confidence. So I would write out some experiences, go back, think about, think about things where you felt overlooked as a child, where you took your precious thing home that you made for your mum at Christmas and went, look, mum, and she went, well, that's nice. <laughs> think about all those things that you, that you, that you don't need to relive them. You don't need to go into them and experience them in any great depth till you lie in there sobbing in your tissues and drinking four <laughs> gallons of red wine because that's just kind of but you do need to think hang on you know have i always been this underdog this not recognized this and how is that a strength because i could flip that to be rather than coming from that that can be the thing that i attract all those women who have had that experience as well so I need to talk about this being invisible. And a lot of women will resonate with being invisible because a lot of us are rendered invisible by motherhood and marriage and just by the fact that we're women in a you know, patriarchal society. So really go into those experiences and journal them and give gratitude for them and forgive them. You know, I don't know what how your family was brought up. Did you have plenty of money? Did you have plenty of time with your parents? It was up and down. My dad was self-employed, so sometimes we had lots of money, and other times then he'd, he'd lose, he'd lost a business, and then we had hardly any money. And and I, there's a couple of things straight away that I can think of. Once, um, my, so my my younger brother and sister used to go on holiday with my mum and dad because me and my older sister were old enough to leave, be left at home. So the the good holidays started happening when we go. didn't go with them. And another thing that's just come to mind is I was never allowed ballet lessons because my, my older sister had did ballet lessons and I couldn't do the same as her. <laughs> so that's just two things straight away that I've thought of. Yeah. So, that, yeah. yeah. And, and, and that will bring up all those, those emotions. And, and there may be a, a, a subconscious belief hidden in there about self-employment as well. Self-employment is risky. It's up mm. and down. It's insecure. So what, when you do that, again, you'll be approaching your business with that, this timidity of dare I, dare I risk it all? Because what happens if, I, what happens if it doesn't work? What are people going to think of me? Am I going to live up to this expectation again of never really coming to much? You know, am I just going to prove everybody right? <laughs> well, no, but do you know what I have? That's, I've, been in, I've been self-employed for um, 19 years on and Good. off, and I have been bankrupt. I, I went bankrupt two years ago, um, well, 12 years ago now, uh, literally lost everything. And it, that's almost a self-fulfilling prophecy, prophecy yeah. isn't it? We, we, will, we will live out a self-fulfilling prophecy, yeah. I think, I think when we're yeah. doing it, we're more aware of it. You know, I lived that out. Personally, yeah. I lived that out in my um, abusive marriage that I had, um, my, very briefly, my parents divorced when, my, when I, my parents were five. And my mum went back to live with her parents and her, my mum's brother who never married. And that was such an abusive environment um, with all control and narcissism that I was brought up in that, that, you know, when I was older, that I was, oh, I'm never going to go back into that. You know, I'm free of it. And what's the first thing I did? You know, yeah. I didn't realise I was attracting those father figures, if you like, that were exactly like that. And that even though my husband was the same age as me, I had such deep ingrained beliefs that I hadn't recognized about women's roles and giving, 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 that I found myself doing that. And then I, you know, realized that my shit, that's how they're just this nasty abusive relationship. Whereas I actually engaged in this self-fulfilling prophecy of this is even though I was so adamant that I wasn't going to do it. So, you know, consciously I wasn't, but subconsciously I adopted those behaviors very implicitly without even realizing it. So uh, limiting beliefs aren't necessarily held within our conscious actions they're the footing that we engage on and that way that way they can come and leg us up afterwards when we're not expecting it so i would i would go back to your why are you being scared? why are you and and look at how you're managing your time because procrastination is the biggest thing that holds us up and it you know it's progress over perfection does it matter I mean, I've got courses out there and I found going, went, going through some PDFs online the other day and it's like, this one's riddled with spelling mistakes. How the hell did I miss all those? You know, it doesn't matter. People are still on the course. They're still getting the results. So 
So it's progress over perfection. You can go back and you can improve it later. And, you know, if it's the first time you've run a course like this, you know, you don't necessarily have to write it all before you've got people enrolled. Because you may find that week one or week two changes what you were going to put in week three. So you can write it as you're going through the course. Get the bare bones of it, but make some changes as you go so that you can shift it to fit. Um, and, and, and how you're managing your time. You know, are you, how is your organized time organization? Do you, do you do like what, you know, it's like a rocks, pebbles and sand method. Yeah, yeah, I try. Um, yeah. And then something happens, which throws the day. And like yesterday I had it all planned out and then the car wouldn't start. So that yeah. threw my day. Um, and then I almost give up on, I don't, oh, no, I didn't. I, I got on with something else that I, that I could have done. But yeah, I try and plan a day. I'm not very good at keeping to it yeah and I think that there's a discipline element of that again isn't mm. it and that's when we don't have the discipline actually when we don't believe what we're going to do is going to be any good yeah <laughs> or going to be a success so then our actions by not being disciplined actually show us what we really believe about things if we're not yeah. disciplined so I think having the rocks paper rocks paper scissors I was going to say that <laughs> rocks, rocks, rocks pebbles and sand method is really helpful because if you write it out in your diary in a planner then even when things go to boot you can say okay so I've, I've now only got 20 minutes what have I got on this list that only takes 20 minutes you know what what email because I send when I'm sat in the car waiting to pick the kids up from after school club that I've drafted and I've just got to hit send now I don't believe in working all the hours God sends I never have done I'll probably frustrate some of my clients sometimes when things don't get done you know as quickly as they would like but um i would rather it was done with the right energy and give them the results that they wanted them rush through so i would look at how you're organizing your time do you write out your do you plan well in advance your month your year your week week at a push <laughs> <laughs> i think i think when we're when we're self-employed we some we we can approach we know this can't we we can actually be an employee in our own business if we're not careful yeah. So we have to take those CEO days to say, right, you know, I'm not doing anything with any clients today. Social media is done. I'm not going to go online. I'm going to sit down and I'm going to plan and plan for that quarter or, you know, this this got, this is why goal setting is so important, isn't it? That we can reverse engineer where we want to be. So, you know, I know that next week I'm running a masterclass. I know that's going to lead into something else. Now a fortnight later, I've got something else going. I know a month later, I've got another launch for another program. I know that all these things are coming up because I need to do that to generate the income that I need. So then I reverse engineer my way back. So without that level of planning, when something goes astray, like your car won't start or your kid comes home from school with a broken arm, you think, yay, <laughs> your whole business schedule will go out the window if you don't have that planning, because at least then you can move things around yeah. and shuffle around your rocks, pebbles and stones so that you can, rocks, pebbles and sand, so that you can go, well, I can fit this in here and, and do various other things. And then, you know, and when you're overstretched, you have to speak to your family, don't you? And say, yeah, oh, yeah. you know, don't sit here and think I'm going to hoover around your feet. You know, <laughs> know where the hoover is. Get to yeah. it. <laughs> yeah. I need so to do a bit a, more of that, definitely. Yeah. yeah and, that, and there is that. When we're, when we're within a family, you know, as women entrepreneurs, particularly when we work from home, there is somehow the expectation that a business is supposed to earn all this money, but somehow it fits around all the housework, all the family and everything else comes first. That somehow we're like some kind of, oh, we're like the teas made out for the woman, the housekeeper, out of Father Ted, who was supposed to stand behind the door all night with a tea tray in her hand in case they woke up in the middle of the night. I don't know if you've seen that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, they would wake up in the night and there she would be behind the door with a tea tray just in case. Yeah, but we can't live our lives like that. You know, if we want to run a business, we have to say, I've got X to do this week. I need you to pull up, otherwise it's not going to happen. Simple as. What do you want? Do you want the shoes, the clothes, the car, the holiday? Yeah. Well, then clear up your bloody bedroom. Yeah. <laughs> it really is that simple. <laughs> and yeah, that's absolutely. We're afraid to ask. We're often afraid to ask because it's, we, oh, we drop all these hints that nobody ever gets. You know, it's like optimistic easy and it putting the airing on the bottom of the stairs in the vain hope that somebody else might carry it up them. You know? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. yeah. 
So we yeah. have to actually ask and we have to be, you know, it, it is unfortunate that women carry most of the emotional labor in houses, which I don't agree with. I think, you know, but we're not there yet um, in pulling men up on where they're falling short in the domestic sphere. They're a little bit slow um, yeah. to give up their privileges of, of not having to do it all. <laughs> yeah, no, absolutely. So my, my husband put a wash on this morning before he went to work. But with the expectation that I would be able to put it out, it didn't say anything, but it so that I would be there to put it out when it was done. Well, it's just you don't. things like that. <laughs> you, don't, you don't. You leave it in there until they come back. <laughs> yeah, I, I didn't. I put it out, but that's it. Yeah. Yeah, well, there you go. Or oh, then you have to have a polite conversation, don't you? Say, yeah. I understand why you did it, and I know you thought that I was at home, but actually, I was doing X, Y, and Z you know and you know have to have those conversations but I would yeah. uh, but with regard to you keep putting off writing your course um you've really got to look at you know visibility so again why you it's not good enough why are you scared to be visible you've really got to go back to where that comes from um you know and and work through it and if you know if needs be um I mean, you, you can I wouldn't say book yourself a ballet lesson because you probably wouldn't be able to do it. But you know, we but we, we can sometimes reward ourselves as grown-ups with the things that we never had as children and release that block. You know, when I was a kid, I always want I had Cindy dolls, not Barbie. And for many years I craved Cindy's horse. I just wanted Cindy's horse. Did I ever get Cindy's horse? No. I got a garden fork instead to dig the garden, but that's beside the point. <laughs> but I really, really wanted this Cindy horse and never got it. I parried this wound and I didn't realise so I had my own daughter and she started wanting these things. But like, you know, toys of that ilk. I still carried this wound. I still thought about it every bloody Christmas. I never had this sodding horse. So when I went out and bought her snack, I bought myself <laughs> I found online an antique Cindy horse in the 1979 box office and I bought it for myself. And that's completely transformed how I feel about Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, you have to look at what can you gift yourself in terms of attention or the things that you never got to kind of like, you know, I always wanted that and I never had it. So, you know, I can give it to myself. That's fine. Um, you yeah. know, so you know, an attention. You know, it's like, you know, if you've got client testimonials, for instance, have you have you already been teaching people courses? No, it's no, it's my first one. Have you done one to one work? Mm -mm, no, that's my intention eventually to do. Although I have helped friends with their businesses, which is what what I do. Um, yeah. But and which is what's given me the idea. Of, of doing what I do so I, I could ask them to give me testimonials yeah I, I would really I would really focus your testimonial on certain things so what was the problem that they had that you solved try and get them to pin it down and what was why did they engage you so what was special about you that's different to everybody else okay. so you want unique characteristics about you and then how was what you did different than anybody else? And by asking those specific questions, it enables you to get an answer that's um, personal to your characteristics, your attributes, your way of solving that problem for that person. And then that you can use on your sales and you can use, you can read through it and go, you know what? I'm really good at that rather than thinking nobody's going to want this you've got people telling you this is this is the problem you solve for me this is this is what you did for me and then that will increase your confidence in going out there and talking to it because you can't beat client testimonials at the end of the day um so I would I would do that if I were you if that's helpful okay yeah lovely brilliant thank you 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 can do this oh yes. anybody can put an online course and if I can do it you can <laughs> <laughs> uh, I will go home now and yeah work on yeah, on that you know, definitely get your marketing going start your marketing commit to it have you got a launch date it was the 4th of January <laughs> <laughs> right what's your launch date going to be I'm going to put you on the spot now 
Wow, we we're in May, aren't we? What about the first week in June? Yeah, I was going to say the first week in June. Yeah, like, so like that's it, great. That gives you three. You've got four weeks now to market and get plenty of people. How are you you're launching it on Facebook? You've got a Facebook group. How are you doing? LinkedIn. It? I'm doing it on. I'm doing it mainly through LinkedIn. Okay, so you've got four weeks then to build your network, to get on some podcasts, yeah. to get the stuff done, to go out there and shout about how bloody marvellous you are and why you yeah. are the only person that can solve that problem in the way that you do. And okay. go and lord it from the rooftops. Get your Beyonce head on and go out there and strut your stuff. <laughs> okay, I will, definitely. I've Thank you. So I'm going to write to this podcast this day, this one next day. Get everything scheduled into your diary. I'm going to spend that long writing courses. I'm going to do that. I'm going to put a post on LinkedIn. I'm going to contact that person. I'm going to reach out to my network. I'm going to say to the people I've already worked with, I'm developing this course. Do you know anybody that might appeal to me, them? Would you, you know, help put the word around? Use what you've already got. Don't be shy about pushing yourself. We so often wait for people to come to us going, yeah. they're watching us. And they're going to reach out to us, but they don't. You know, most of my clients, I have to nurture through messaging. Going, come on, have a thought with me. You know, I can probably help you. Um, they don't suddenly go, yes, I want to buy your stuff. You know, you have to have those conversations. Of one to one tends to come through referral, high end ticket. So my my high end ticket, my sixty k high end ticket, which I hardly ever talk about on Facebook, because um, it's more launching in that respect. That always comes through one-to-one -one referral by someone that I've worked with. So your high-end ticket one-to-one -one will come through referrals. Your group that the, and the launch that you're doing. Have you got a proper launch for it? Are you doing a proper launch? You no. Know, <laughs> an evergreen launch as opposed yeah. to a launch lot. But you're still yeah. on kind of launch, even if it's evergreen. Yeah, I know. Yeah. So um, before when I was talking about it before Christmas. And again, I know I didn't do enough. It was almost like a, I'm, I'm doing a course, buy it sort of thing, which I know looking back now, you can't, you can't do that. So no, you can't, I'm no. now doing more and more posts on LinkedIn um, about solving problems and, and things, things like that. Um, you talk so about the transformation, not the problem. So you talk, yeah. you talk about the little problem, you talk about the problem a bit, but people know what their own, you know what the problem is, they're living it. So talk about the transformation. But yeah, which I have. So it's almost I'm giving advice to those people as to what they could do to get over the problem. That's what my posts are about yeah. more now. But do, and also don't over teach in your posts so that they go away and think, yeah, I can do that myself without her. <laughs> no, yeah, no, but that's 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 a, a, a question as well that you know how much do you give it is it, it, it it's really difficult isn't it to get that fine line yeah it is it is there's there's it's an art isn't it that's learned at the yeah. end of the day um by working i mean i mean if i i mean this the court the, the launch that's going next week is all about your mindset and manifestation it's not it's not business course or something. no no like for instance if i was working with you one of the other courses that i do with is working with the soul of your business then this is one of the categories that we work through of, you know, who is your niche? What does your business feel like to them so their soul feels like it's come home? What's the soul of your business telling you? You work out, you know, exactly who that is. And once you've really understood that niche and the problem, then you can work out how much content to give them so that you're not over teaching so that they're going away thinking, I can do all this by themselves. Because actually, if they could have done it all by themselves, they would have already done it. Yeah. And this I is know. what people yeah. forget. Oh, I don't need to go on your mindset course. I don't need to go on your energy course. Whatever. Because, you know, I can do all that myself. It's like, okay, well, why haven't you? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. If it was that easy, you would have done it already. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah, you know, but, the, but that, if you get through, you know, the direct messaging people and encouraging people in those conversations to talk about their problem, what are their big goals? Why haven't they solved it? And then you can say, well, I work with women to solve this problem. Do you want to have a conversation? And yeah. then, you know, but you're not trying to ram it down their throat. You're not trying to sell them something they don't need because actually you solve that problem. And mm -hmm. if they've already solved it, they need help. There's nothing, you know, it's, that's just the way it is, isn't it? You know, if my yeah. washing breaks, I don't get it out and try and fix it myself. I call a plumber, you know? <laughs> yeah, no, that's true. Yeah. So I think, you know, and if it's business focused, you're, you're, course is it business focus is it 
uh, retailers because I've I've been in retail all my life. That's my my background. So yeah. it's helping small independent retailers. So um, it's business, business, business to business kind of thing yeah. as opposed to yeah. 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 So there's so there's yeah, so really focus on who you've helped and get those. And you can offer some suggestions. So it's like, you know, like your total solution for some things, you imagine it like a piece of cake, you know, you're you know that you've got a stage of solutions to go through to, to solve that problem. It's a or well, it's a series of steps, isn't that? Yeah. So you can say, well, I do X, but if you want to go in this any deeper as in get the real solution, you know, you need to work them further, but that will help you. As long as you give them something that will help them, um, then they've got something to take away with. But actually, if they really want to be helped, most people have to engage in a bit more support, don't they? It's yeah. like, you know, there's so many free workshops online, isn't there, to raise your vibe and to love that. But the best will in the world, you can attend a 45 minute free workshop on anything. But is it really going to solve the problem if you're absolutely brutally on its back? It's going to be something, isn't it? It's not really going to transform your life by listening to a 20 minute meditation on YouTube, is it? No. 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 <laughs> you have to put the work in. It's as simple yeah. as that problem's kitchen over surface. So it's that kind of framework that you need to go at it with so that people can see the value that you offer. Going in there, confident, energetic tiara on your head. You are the answer to their prayers. They just don't know it yet. <laughs> yeah so yeah but okay. I'd, I'd really dig down like i said go back to that childhood stuff about you know where you were where you had the rug pulled out from under you on all those occasions really dig deep journal it out say thank you for the experience because it's made me who i am today you know i forgive my parents because they probably had a lot on their plate four children their brains were probably you know they didn't mean it you know we're all only human and it is what it is yeah so, we don't need to haul anybody over the coals because we're all here learning, aren't we? You know, we all we all make mistakes and we all cock up and, you know, and, and inevitably all parenthood is, parenthood in essence energetically is the route to failure because if we supported our kids and give them everything that they want, they wouldn't actually grow as people and they'd be selfish as obnoxious brats. So, <laughs> so you know, it, it, gives, it gives you backbone. And that's yeah. what you need to get through life. So, yeah. so has that been helpful? Oh, it's been amazing yeah thank you I, th I think I've taken up everybody's time but yes it's been, <laughs> it's been amazing <laughs> but yeah now that's so as long as you found it as long as you found it helpful that's um yeah so I don't think there's any more questions in the chat box anyway nobody else has leapt forward at the moment unless there's anything else so if there isn't and everybody's happy we've run slightly over so we will um we will call it a day but yeah so yeah so good luck with your course Get Thank yourself, you. get a date in the diary, start your marketing, loud and proud, get your graphics done, plan it all out. You know, hit them for six, hit them between the eyes. <laughs> I will, I will. Don't be afraid to be big and bold and, you know, I can do this for you, you know, because that's what you want to hear in somebody. Is I can solve this problem. Full stop. Absolute confidence. Because I'm sure you can. You've got experience. Look. Yeah. Yeah, been there, through. done that. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, so you could do it. Come on, yeah. we're all cheering you on. Yeah, go okay, through. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. <laughs> all right then. Okay, so if there's no more questions, I can't see any in the chat box. Um, thank you very much, everybody. I hope you help find it helpful, and I hopefully will see you all in the masterclass over live or on replay next week. So. You will, if you've signed up, you'll get an email to get the workbook um, tomorrow, which you'll be able to download ready for Monday. That will be your guide, your notes, your inspiration um, to work you through the week. And there will also be homework posts going up in the week, which will give you a little task for the day to help you keep the momentum going through the week as we shift, shift your awareness around horrible thing to say, but why we are normally the common denominator in all the disasters that happen in our life, the common denominator is normally us, if we're brutally honest about it. So, and how to stop you tripping yourself up in life, but at least that you can achieve what you want. So, okay, it's been lovely to see you all. Thank you very much for coming. And I will see you all next week. Okay then, bye. Thank you, bye. bye. bye.